am here today with Dr. Jason from uh, the natural path clinic that I used to see when I was having my flare-ups and Dr. Jason has helped me immensely on my healing journey and he's a huge reason why my skin has healed so much so I'm really thankful for that and he's also on one of my podcasts if you've uh, watched my interview with him he gives a lot of good tips on how to help you heal from severe eczema. So thanks for being here with me today, Dr. Jason. Thanks for having me. Today I want to talk about topical steroid withdrawal. I know that's mm -hmm. a huge topic nowadays in the eczema community mm -hmm. where a lot of people are using steroids and then their body gets so addicted to it that when they stop using it, their eczema flares up. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what your experience is with this. It's really interesting because I actually went through that whole process, I think, myself. At the time, no one really had a term for it. Um, back in the 70s when I was on steroids, I remember them telling my mom, at least and myself, that um, they're safe, um, they're completely effective, which they are to a certain degree, they're covering symptoms. Um, and you can be on it for the rest of your life and you can lather it on any amount you want into any area that's flaring up. And I understand why they did that. I mean, at the time, the steroids did help to cover the symptoms. So, you know, as a doctor, if you have some with symptoms, your job is to get rid of them. So it makes sense to just put them on until it just never comes back. So I understand why they were giving that, that advice, but I don't think they understood how damaging the steroids are to the body. When you take the steroid on the skin, it absorbs systemically into the body. So it's like you're taking it, sometimes even worse than oral because it just absorbs right in. It doesn't bypass through the liver or anything like that. It just filters right into the body. Now mind you, the amounts are very small, right? But because you're putting it over such a large surface area, over time it starts to add up into the body. Steroids are, are very interesting because steroids are derived from human, they're not from a human, but they're, they're very similar to human stress hormones. So stress hormones are manufactured in the adrenal gland of the body. We have, we have steroids like cortisol, we have cortis corticosteroids, we have um, um, a whole bunch of different ones in the body. So, what happens is when you start putting on the steroids creams, it starts to create feedback against the adrenal glands. The adrenal gland puts out steroid hormones to help the body deal with stress. It also helps the body deal with damage. It helps the body to fight infections. It helps to rally the troops pretty much. Because the adrenal gland, while it doesn't fight the battle, it's sort of the general that controls the immune army kind of thing, right? So if you start taking in all these steroids topically, or even if you take it in with puffers and things like that, over time, it starts creating feedback on the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland sort of over time says, why would I want to make my own steroid when there's steroid already in the system? Because it's all feedback, right? So the adrenal releases the steroid hormone, which is like cortisol to deal with inflammation. Um, the body sends the feedback saying, okay, we got it. And the adrenal says, okay, great. I'm gonna stop producing it. And that's how it works. But when you keep taking in the topical steroids over time, you get this feedback saying, okay, we don't need to do it anymore. We have it, we have it, we have it. So the adrenal says, why would I want to make my own? It's kind of like somebody that doesn't like going to work and just they start getting paychecks coming in the mail. Every two weeks, there's paychecks coming in. And they're like, oh, money's coming in. And I don't like working. So over time, they're like, why would I go to work? The money's just coming in. I'm going to stay at home and not work. So they get lazy. They get lazy and they get suppressed in their work environment because the money's coming in. That's the same thing with the steroid. Now when you stop using steroids after taking them for many, many years, I mean this takes years to develop. It's not something you put on steroid once and immediately become steroid addicted. I mean this takes years and years and years, but many people are on them for years, right? So I just need to make that clear. It's not one of those immediate things. It takes a long time to develop, but it's sort of like you're getting money for like five or 10 years and not working. And then one day the money just doesn't show up. But now you've left your job and you haven't worked in five years and you're lazy and you don't know how to work and it's hard to get back into the job and you're dependent on that money. You need that money coming in to keep your income going so you can survive. The body's the same way. So when you stop the steroid, the, the adrenal gland's been so suppressed for so long, it cannot regulate that steroid, natural steroid production. So the body's like totally deficient. So these are when people go off the stairs and right away the flare comes back extremely high, even worse than it was before, and they start developing other conditions as well, part of the trial, right? So eczema, allergies, asthma. Some people, their asthma is so bad they have to be on these inhalers on a regular basis. 
and I'm not saying stop your inhaler, I mean if you have a life threatening condition like asthma, you have to take it, but you gotta figure out what's causing it, right? So um, that's one of the big things with steroid addiction, is the longer you take it, the more suppressive it becomes. And after many, many, many years of doing this, for a lot of people, it can cause a lot of problems. I mean, when I went off these steroids, my skin got so bad, I remember, but as I saw the naturopath and we were doing some work, she was able to get that reaction down. But the length of treatment that I had to take was significantly long because of the amount of steroids I think I was on. Like when I saw her um, with the dietary changes and the things she had given me, my skin stopped itching within about a month. Well, actually within a week, it was already a little bit better, which was quite amazing to me. But after about a month or two, it was pretty much not itching at all. But it took about a good year and a half to fully clear, right? And I think that was because I had been on steroids for probably about a good, I don't know, probably about 12 years, chronically. That's a long time. So the rule I give for some patients, and I mean, it's not that I want to adhere to this rule, but they always say for every year you've suppressed the condition, it could take about a month of treatment. So if you suppress the steroids for let's say five years, it may take five months for your skin issue to get better once you deal with it. I mean, that doesn't hold up in every case, but that's sort of the general rule that we kind of go with. So when someone comes in and like, yes, I've been um, on these steroids to deal with my eczema problem for the last 30 years, <laughs> I mean, I know it's gonna be longer than a few months. It might take, hopefully not 30 months, but quite a while before we see overt change. But initially, the itching comes down. And once the itching comes down, that's when things start healing a lot faster. But I mean, that's why. There's big debate about this, right, in the medical community. Some people say there's no such thing as steroid addiction, it's all fictitious, and there's a lot of people like, no, it actually happens. And these are usually people that see it clinically. They see it all the time, like, yes, it actually happens. And I've seen that a lot myself. Um, but just like when I was a kid, they're like, steroids are fine, they're safe to take, and you can take them forever. That was the total ball at the time. Um, and now they've changed that tone, saying, yes, you can use them, but I mean, don't go crazy with them. I think people are now more cautious about using steroids, um, which is great. But I mean, there's a time and a place. You have to use it, you have to use it. If you're having a severe asthmatic reaction and you can't breathe, I mean, take the steroid, right? I mean, I'm not saying don't take the steroid. If your eczema is bleeding to the point where it's gonna get infected and it's everywhere, I mean, take the steroid cream, but for God's sakes, try to figure out what's causing it. And that's where you can get real effect on the body. So is there anything you would recommend uh, to help speed up the healing process after the topical steroid withdrawal? That's a tough one because you have to put the fire of inflammation out first before you can heal. It's kind of like a building that's on fire, right? When you cover the building, you're not seeing the flames, but when you uncover the flames come up, right? So there's no point in rebuilding a structure that's burning until the fire is actually out. So rule number one with treating skin issues or other inflammatory conditions is to put out the fire first. There's no point in healing the skin when it's on fire. So we do treatments to try and bring down the redness and the itching. When the itching and redness are gone, then the skin will be very dry and flaky, it won't look pretty, but that's great. That's almost like a house that's been burning but the fire's out and now it's just kind of smoldering. So now we can kind of bulldoze it and start rebuilding the structure. So the rebuilding and the repair of the skin actually happens after the inflammation has been dealt with. So it's a two part process. And no, do not deal with the inflammation by covering with steroid cream. Mm. <laughs> because I'll just suppress it and it'll come back. I mean, when I say deal with the inflammation, I mean deal with that the root issue. So the actual cause has been eliminated prior right, through dietary change and finding out what foods aggravate the body or metabolic issues that are going on or cleansing of the body. Well, who knows? I mean, it depends on the case. And then you can get in there and heal the skin. Okay. I mean, you can sort of do both at the same time, but I get more aggressive on the healing part after the fire has been mm. put out. And the fire can take a bit of time. It depends. I mean, that's why the presentation of eczema is very different for some people. And they have different names of eczema. But to be honest with you, they're all the same. So some eczema will become very weepy. So this is the kind of eczema that comes very red and it cracks and in between the cracks it starts to ooze and it oozes this fluid. And it's funny because the fluid looks very clear, but if you wipe it with a tissue and you let the tissue dry, as gross as it sounds, it actually turns brownish yellow in color. So it's not like a clear fluid, it's actually toxicity coming from the body. Okay? And it doesn't smell particularly good. Yeah. It's like metabolic waste, basically. It's supposed to come out your bowel, it's coming out through your skin. So that's a weepy eczema. That's a definite gut inflammatory issue. Then you get what they call 
raised type allergic eczema. So it's basically it raises and it's very itchy and it hives and it creates little red pinpoint dots on the body. That is more of an allergic type of eczema to something, but again, same cause, different presentation. Is that called this? I mean, if you look at the, the Journal of uh, Dermatology, all the pictures, I mean, you can go through all these different names and they name it basically based upon, the nomenclature is basically based upon the shape and the appearance. So, numular eczema, dyscratic eczema, you know, inflammatory, this, oozing, that. I mean, they're basically all different ways of explaining fire. So when you light something on fire, there's many different ways the fire can show. And it's like me trying to label every kind of type of fire based upon how it looks and how it burns. But in reality, it's still something combusting. Yeah. So in the, in the end, you still have to deal with that issue. So the eczema shows in many different ways um, and in many different parts of the body. The main common areas are the scalp, um, creases of the arms, hands, creases of the knee. Um, but some will get in the neck, they get in the torso, they get it down there, they get it on their legs, they get it everywhere. But I've never actually seen eczema really on the sole of the foot. I've seen it on the top of the foot, I've seen it on the palm of the hand, but I've never really seen eczema on the sole of the foot. And I guess it's just because the skin itself is so thick, it doesn't show up there. But eczema can basically form in any area where there's skin. I've seen it in people's ears, on the ear, I mean around the lips are very common. Um, sometimes the area can be very important as well. So eczema on the face, can be usually a dust sensitivity or something to do with um, uh, sugar imbalance. Uh, eczema on the creases and arms is usually a dysbiotic issue, so something about digestion. Uh, eczema on the scalp is largely stress related. Um, I'm not saying this is totally diagnostic of people, but it's just things I've seen in practice. Um, and then some eczema just cracks and bleeds. That's usually a sign of a protein metabolism issue, the really itchy eczema, especially at night when it gets really, really itchy, is usually the patient can't tolerate certain fats. So sometimes as well, like you can tell based upon how it presents on the kind of cause that it might be. Um, but again, you have to do testing to find out. These are just things, again, I've seen, uh, seeing many patients with eczema. Do you have a um, website or something that people can use to contact you if they want to see you? Sure, I mean, the website's just www.drjasonlee.com or the uh, email is just info at drjasonlee.com. So thank you so much That's for it. watching, thank you. and I hope I helped you today.